What is up, Snow Hills kids? It is Sunday, and I am super excited to see you guys today. I hope you guys are doing wonderful. I know I am doing good, and I am excited for today's lesson. Now, you know we've been talking about something new. Last series, we talked about how creation glorifies God, and God created everything. Well, now we're talking about sin. We're talking about the fall, and kind of how the plan is not what we thought it would be. Adam and Eve sinned, and we talked about that last week, and they brought sin into the world. And remember, sin is doing anything, thinking anything, or acting in any way that goes against a command that God has given us, right? And sin is a little bit more than just breaking a rule. Sin is when we put ourselves above God, when we think we know better than God, when we think we are smarter or better than God, and so we act in a way that shows that, whether it's being unkind to somebody because we think that we deserve it, um, or taking something, or not cleaning your room, or whatever it is. It's all where we put ourselves above God and above others. So today we're talking about how it kind of continued on. And it's another story that I'm sure you guys are familiar with, with Cain and Abel. You see, Cain and Abel were the first kids, right? Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. Um, and they were, well, human, just like Adam and Eve, and they messed up. But this one was big. This one was a pretty big deal. You see, uh, we're going to break down the story, but first we're going to read it and then we'll talk about it. We'll talk about what sin does and how it messes up our lives and, and what hope we have. So we're going to jump on over to our Bible story for today and then we're going to break down the whole thing. I'll see you guys over there. <laughs> Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. Abel grew up and became a shepherd, and Cain worked the ground like a farmer to grow crops. One day, Cain gave God an offering of some of the produce he grew. Abel gave God some of the firstborn of his flock. God accepted Abel's offering, but he did not accept Cain's offering. Cain was furious. Why are you so angry? God asked. If you do what is right, won't you be accepted? God warned Cain that sin was crouching at the door. Sin wants to control you, God said, but you must control it. Then Cain invited Abel to go out into the field. While they were in the field, Cain killed his brother. Then God asked Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know, said Cain. Is it my job to look after him? But God knew what had happened. He said to Cain, what have you done? God punished Cain. God told Cain that if he tried to work the ground, nothing would grow for him. God said Cain would spend the rest of his life wandering the earth. He would not have a home or anywhere to rest. This punishment is, is too much, Cain said. You are sending me away from this land and away from you. If I have to wander the earth, whoever finds me will, will kill me. So God put a mark on Cain to protect him so that whoever found him would not kill him. Then Cain left the land and went to live in Nod, a land to the east of Eden. He had a wife and a family, but they did not follow God. God gave Adam and Eve another son, Seth. Adam and Eve's family grew. Seth grew up and had a family too. Around this time, Adam's descendants in Seth's family began to call on the name of the Lord. Adam and Eve's sin and its consequences spread to all of their descendants. But God did not forget his promise to send a rescuer. At just the right time, God would send his son to save sinners. So guys, this story's crazy, isn't it? It seems like there's a lot of 
anger and frustration and we really see the payment of sin so uh i hope you guys have your bible guys this is a super important tool for all of you guys and i encourage you to reach out if you don't have one i will send one to you so that you can have your very own um but these bibles right they tell us god's story and so today we're going to be in god's story in genesis chapter four so that's the big number four and we're going to be going through and recapping it a little bit um, after you have watched the video. So you guys saw the video, you saw what happened. Adam and Eve, they loved each other, which was great. They still were together and they had a kid and they had Cain and then they had Abel. And so Abel took care of sheep and Cain farmed the land. After some time, Cain gathered some things he had grown and he brought them as an offering to the Lord. So Cain kind of gathered what he had and then Abel brought an offering and he bought the fattest parts of some animals from his flock. And they were the first animals born. So it might be like oh, the fattest part of the animal and the firstborn. That doesn't, what does that have to do? Well, back then, that was the best, right? The best of the best. People thought that the firstborn um, of an animal and the fattiest part was the best part to give. And so Abel was sacrificing. He was sacrificing the best he had and he was giving it to God. And Cain was just giving it, right? He just, you know, pulled up a radish here and a carrot here and he's like, here you go, God. And and that wasn't the case for Abel. Abel was sacrificing. And, and so the Lord really loved Abel. And he favored Abel over Cain. And this made Cain a angry, right? In verse 5 it says, But he wasn't pleased with Cain in his offering. So Cain became very angry and his face was sad. So Cain was upset. Cain wanted to be favored over Abel. And, and, and the Lord said, Why are you so angry? Why do you look sad? Uh, do do what is right, and you will be accepted. And if you don't do what is right, sin is waiting at your door to grab you. It desires to control you, but you must rule over it. So we see God really address sin here. You know, Adam and Eve eating the, the fruit wasn't the sin. It was the disobedience to God. And God says, if you don't, if you don't work on your sin, it's going to control you. Now, ultimately, we know that we can't work on our sin apart from Jesus Christ. And that's just God foreshadowing or preparing us for Jesus who is to come. But as we know the story goes, Cain doesn't. He doesn't guard his heart against sin. And instead, he lets it take over. And in his frustration and his anger, he calls Abel out to the field. And he tacks and kills him. That's pretty sad. You see, the Lord ends up asking Cain, where's your brother? And Cain says, I don't know. And he does. And he's killed his brother. Can you imagine? And the Lord is upset about this. And so he sends Cain off. But at the same time, the Lord does a very cool thing. He protects Cain. Cain killed one of his creations, right? Which is terrible. It's awful what Cain did, but what he also did, the Lord protected Cain, right? He gave him a mark and a symbol so that people knew not to kill him. Why? Because God's love and mercy is so big. It's so much bigger than we can even imagine. And in fact, um, the Lord blesses Adam and Eve, and they have another kid named Seth. And through Seth and that line that we actually see, and you can read through the Bible, through Seth, we get the descendants of Seth and his kids and his kids and all the way down the line, all the way to Jesus. You see, Jesus is connected all the way back to Adam and Eve and to Seth. That even the first people that sinned, the first people that broke God's commandment, the first ones, God had a plan. And his plan was to send Jesus to die on the cross for your sins. Just like Cain, we sin and we fail and God still loves us. He still protects us and he still seeks after us. So I encourage you guys to find ways that you can see Jesus in all of this. When you're struggling, when you're having a bad day or a bad time, or you're sinning and you're frustrated and you're upset, just remember that God still loves you. And his plan through Jesus is complete. And now we have that hope in Jesus. Thank you so much, guys, for listening today. Uh, these stories are hard. They're hard to hear. Sin has consequences. And it's hard to see that and understand that and take that in. But at the end of the day, Jesus still loves us. And that is our 
hope. So I hope you guys enjoyed today and we have more to go on tomorrow. Soon we're going to start talking about the plan that Jesus has or God has through Jesus in his people that we get to see laid out for us. So I will see you guys next week with our next lesson. Bye.